finally he sleeps here back again working on the sonic okay so the chevy sonic has got more problems uh we have a burst upper radiator hose so you can see that the radiator hose burst car overheated because of it uh we're going to take a look at it today discuss what can cause an upper radiator hose burst or actually what can cause a lower radiator hose to burst um, what you need to look for to fix it, how to do it, and what to be concerned about. So what causes uh, upper radiator hose or even a lower radiator hose to burst like that? B boils down to two reasons. Number one, this is just old. And uh, number two, there's a clog somewhere or something that builds up pressure so that it bursts. And if we go back to the first one about them being old, uh, there's kind of a two-part reason that goes to that. Uh, the second possible is electro uh, chemical degradation so what happens is, is you can see the burst here what happens is it swells and it pops and electro chemical or electrochemical degradation has to do with metal inside the engine carrying a electric charge that fall, flows down through the coolant and when you get into an area like this, especially where there's air in the system, and since this is an open system and not a closed system, the electrical charge in there can cause degradation inside the rubber, and it just breaks down over time and it starts to get crunchy. And then when pressure builds up in the system, it just cracks, and then when it goes, it goes. And uh, that's where you get the burst from. The other possible reason is there's some something that is keeping the coolant from flowing through. So you can have a bad thermostat, you could have a clogged radiator, um, something going on that keeps the flow from going through. So it builds up, it gets hot and it swells and then the tube bursts. Now, because this is the upper radiator hose right here, the upper that is connected to the thermostat back here, uh, the flow is going through the thermostat into the radiator. So if the thermostat gets closed, this would be empty. There would be no fluid coming out. So this hose isn't going to burst. Um, if your lower hose burst, then it could be a bad thermostat because it would be keeping the, the pressure we're building up on this side. Because of this being the upper hose in the burst, um, more than likely it has more to do with the age of the hose the location or the radiator has a clog. It's always a good idea to uh, check your thermostat if you've had any kind of overheating issues. Uh, thermostats are, they're a simple fix. They don't take that long to check. And the easiest way to check it is to pull the thermostat out and put it in a pan of water, like a pot on the stove, bring the water up to temperature, which boiling, and you should see the thermostat close or open um, depending upon once the temperature reaches it. That's how you make sure that the thermostat isn't either stuck open or stuck closed. The boiling water should open the thermostat because it, it replicates the situation of it in the car as the car is overheating. Now for us, I know the thermostat's good and because the burst came past the thermostat, we are going to look at the radiator and we're going to go ahead and flush the radiator before we swap out the hose. Now replacing this hose is super simple. It's just basically a clamp here and a clamp back there. It's just those two clamps and then you swap the hose. I'm actually gonna take the reservoir tank off so I can show what we're dealing with. Uh, the first thing we're gonna do is swap out the hose with the new one. And then before we fill this up, we're gonna flush the radiator to make sure there's nothing clogging the radiator uh, to make sure that there isn't a simple fix that could prevent another hose from bursting or for it causing more damage to the engine. All right, new hose is in, clamps have been replaced, and we are good to go. Now it's just a matter of getting the car up and flushing the radiator. 
In order to drain the radiator, we're here under the passenger side and there is a panel here that's in the way. If we look up in there, that is where the radiator is. So we're just gonna take a couple of bolts off. Now, depending on your car, you just need access to the radiator drain. We're gonna go ahead and take this whole panel down just to make life easier. It's a plastic little clip. We're gonna get a drain pan under it. I'm gonna reach up and loosen that valve and then it's gonna start draining. We'll make sure the radiator cap is off and that's how we're gonna drain out the system. It usually does make one hell of a mess though, so be prepared. Next step, we're just gonna run a couple of gallons of clear water through, just plain water and flush the system out to make sure it's all flowing the way it's supposed to. And uh, now we're gonna close all the clamps up and everything and start the car for about 10 minutes, five, 10 minutes, get the water to flow through the engine and then we'll shut it down and drain the water out and repeat that a couple of times to try to flush any debris through. All right, so I've flushed about two gallons of clear distilled water have been flushed through the system. Now, what I'm gonna do next is uh, a little different. I'm gonna actually, once this is done draining, you can still hear it's draining now, but once this is done draining out all the, the distilled water that's in it, I'm gonna run about half full of antifreeze on top of the clear water. I'm gonna run 50-50 dilute, pre-diluted antifreeze through run the car for about 10 minutes, and then I'm gonna flush that out. I'm gonna drain it, and then I'm gonna fill it with regular, just more uh, distilled 50-50 pre-diluted uh, antifreeze. But I'm gonna put this antifreeze in, same way we kind of flush the oil out when you put the fresh oil through to make sure that there's nothing coming in there because I don't want any pockets and reservoirs of clear water, distilled water sitting in the engine. So I'm gonna waste a little bit, probably about a gallon of antifreeze, flushing it out with antifreeze after we've done the two gallons of water. Last step is we just top everything off now that it's all closed back up. It's been flushed. We flushed some antifreeze through so there's no more water in the system. And now it's just a matter of refilling and getting all the air out of the lines and just closing the system off. Hope this information helped. If it did, subscribe here on the channel. It doesn't cost anything. It does make a big difference. If you're looking for the process to actually top off and fill the radiator back up on a Sonic, there's a link for that in the description.